G'day friends, welcome to Sketchflix, another Whimsy Ween episode of Sketchflix. Today I've got Hocus Pocus. Now this is just, I mean, this is Halloween classic for me. This is the penultimate Halloween movie. There has been no other, never been done, iconic. <laughs> um, it's just, it's everything. And for that reason, hashtag Shark Tank, I have to say, I may have oversold this one. <laughs> this was really hard. I'm, I know I'm, I keep telling you this every time I start sketch flicks, but it truly catches me off guard every single time I do it. And this was the second, uh, this was a double feature night. I actually had done Edward Scissorhands just before this. So I thought I was super warmed up. I thought I wouldn't even need the initial uh, like break into it phase, but I did still. So I'm still learning something new here in that um, even if you've done a whole sketch flicks, the next one will start you right back at ground zero. <laughs> and uh, and the reason I think for that is that you're like, you're getting into the headspace and it does take quite a moment to get in there. And this also being one of my favorite, favorite Halloween movies, if not like it's top up there of like favorite movies of all time anyway. Um, I had so many ideas that I wanted to tackle before I'd even started and setting yourself up with that kind of expectation is killer in sketch flicks because you've only got an hour and a half to two hours to actually get it all done. So uh, it was it was actually quite a struggle and I'm gonna go out and say, even though I do like some of the pieces in this one, I think this has the least amount of uh, sketches that I'm actually completely happy with. So not to say that I don't like what's in there. I do like what's in there. Again, Sketchflix is an exercise more so than a, um, a way to create finished pieces. <laughs> it's actually the worst thing to do if you want to create a finished piece, but it's to uh, stimulate that imagination and to get your hands moving quickly, to conceptualize ideas quite quickly, pull inspiration. It works on your observation skills. It's a, it's, it's more of a creative exercise than it is a, uh, a way to go about doing anything. And like I said, from the beginning, it was just my excuse to watch television at work. <laughs> um, and what better way at Halloween than to watch one of my favorite Halloween movies. So I did tackle a lot of the, uh, the subject matter I thought I was going to, and no surprises here. I got way too carried away with Winifred Sanderson. She is just, I mean, Bette Midler in this role is iconic. The Divine Miss M just gave me everything and more I've ever needed from a witch. So when I came to draw it, I knew that there'd be a temptation for me to just stick with Winnie. And I did try to push myself outside of that a little bit, but you can even see when I get to more of the fashion illustration sketches, I, um, I, I just focused on Winifred. <laughs> Not to say that I don't love Kathy and Jimmy and I don't love SJP. I love a good bit of SJP and, uh, you know, Kathy is obviously way too hilarious for words in this movie. That crooked smile that she's got the whole time just slays my existence. But yeah, I, I did get a little carried away. I drew, um, oh, what's her name? Why am I pulling a blank on the little girl's name? I know her real name, Thora Birch. What's her name in the movie? <laughs> Max is the is the guy. We've got Winnie, Sarah, Mary. Oh, I don't even. What's the girl's name now? Too. <laughs> All I can think of is her Yabos. <laughs> um, what is her name? Emily is the one that gets snatched. Thackeray Binks is the cat and also the uh, 90s heartthrob that starts the movie. Oh, I'm, I'm literally so angry at myself. I can hear you all screaming at the screen. <laughs> I know everyone's just saying, it's this, it's this, oh, I'm, I'm, no, what is it? I'm so annoyed. Danny! Ah, uh, Danny. It's Danny. <laughs> and we're finished. <laughs> <laughs> takes me seven minutes to catch the name. Uh, no, so I did draw Danny over there in this uh, little, you know, almost children's storybook illustration style. She was one of my favorites from this whole uh, sketch flicks, to be honest. I tried drawing the Black Flame Kendall, but it goes by so quickly. I thought, it, to me, it almost looked like this beautiful candle with a henna tattoo on it. So I tried to approach that with um, some Tombow markers. Tombows really come through and show out for sketch flicks. I don't know why, because I don't usually use them uh, in any other circumstance, but for sketch flicks, I seem to always uh, gravitate towards them. And I only own the portraits pack and uh, a couple of blacks. 
So I think maybe them having that big substantial brush tip uh, can cover a lot of area quickly and it's I usually like to use a brush pen when I'm drawing. I'm actually using one here. But the size of this book, the scale is so much bigger that the uh, the variation in brush stroke lines on an image like this uh, doesn't look as contrasty as it does with one of those Tombow brushes. So I think that's probably why I gravitate towards them in this book over everything else. And uh, also they have the benefit of pulling out their water reactive. Um, so they'll pull out different ink if you reactivate them with either the, the blender or if I've got a little brush with water, like a water brush or something, they'll pull out some of that ink and I can get some nice shading going on on some of these really simple illustrations. Uh, because in essence, like, even if I spend a few extra minutes on one, it's not like I'm adding any great amount of detail to anything here. They're all ideas, they're all concept sketches, which is really good too because I um, I tend to like the quirky nature of a bit of a concept sketch. I can I tend to like how free and loose they are. It's one of the reasons why I don't, uh, well, why I thought when I did the Sketchflix die cuts pack that I would keep the original image because there's such a charm to the sketch that when you try to clean it all up and make it uh, a lot more you know, like when you try to finesse the whole thing, <laughs> you tend to lose a lot of that stuff. And sometimes what I, I don't necessarily know exactly what I like about the piece, but it's probably got something to do with the charm of something being a little off, maybe the symmetry being a little off, or, um, you know, even a wayward stroke that kind of really made the difference in one of the sketches. So it's really hard to clean that stuff up. I like this little thing I drew here. It was very quick and very simple, but I thought the effect was really fun as well because I, I, I was debating whether I should draw their big capes on the broom or like a witch on a broom. It's, um, it's such a Halloween staple, but I kept it very, very simple and I think that really helped. And then I did some uh, brush stroke lettering. Brush, brush lettering. Why did I say brush stroke? Uh, brush lettering and just put Winifred Sanderson on her cloak, which I thought was just a nice little, it's just a nice little thing. Like I'd love to have that just kind of in the corner of my journal. Do you know what I mean? Like in my planner or something, like a nice little sticker. It's not going to happen, but <laughs> um, they're just, you know, simple sketches and, and simple ideas. I can always call on some of these later on down the line if I've got something specific that I want to try and I remember that there's something in here or, um, you know, even take certain elements of an idea that flashed up before me and maybe didn't have enough time to uh, conceptualize. There's always there's always some fun stuff to look back on and find in here. And I do kind of work back and forth during sketch flicks. If, I've, uh, if I find that there's a part of the movie that I'm maybe not so inspired by, or if I'm, I'm losing a bit of that momentum, I'll go back and work on something that I've already started, but maybe gave up on halfway through. And some stuff I will just give up on and I won't go back to it because I don't feel a need for it. It's, it's very much one of those things where if you feel like doing it, you just go with it. And if you don't, you don't. And it's, it goes by so quickly. You don't have time to be mad at yourself for anything. So it's, um, it is just such a good exercise. I've been seeing a couple people uh, after Edward Scissorhands, maybe thinking about getting on board and giving it a go. Again, I don't, don't pressure yourself to do anything you don't want to do, but I would love to see it. <laughs> Selfishly, it would be great viewing for me. Um, but yeah, take your time with it and, and start with movies. I'm, I'm going to put this out here only because I, I've, I've practiced with a few of them now. Start with movies that you don't necessarily know inside out or love the absolute most because you go in with this certain idea or an expectation and uh, when things don't come out the way that not even you planned them, but that you expected they'd come out, it just... You know, like, even if I don't plan a specific thing, there's a certain quality that I want to be able to achieve, even in the sketch. And sometimes I completely stuff it up and it gets really irritating. And I tend to do that more so on these films that I'm really, really into. The other ones that I haven't watched for a few years, I find it much easier to disconnect my uh, my thoughts from that and, and my, my feelings about the movie. I think... Also, don't limit yourself to uh, animated features. Animated features were great because um, the illustrations themselves are typically very simple and so it was easier to pull inspiration from that, I think. But also you get stuck in the trap of trying to redraw what you're seeing on the screen or maybe uh, redraw the style that you're seeing on the screen. The live action ones are actually really fun because you're kind of at the mercy of what you can illustrate like 
in the first place. So I think it keeps you more inside your wheelhouse than if you are watching an animated feature. Um, I think one that would be really interesting to try is one of those Studio Ghibli films. Uh, I've only ever seen Spirited Away. I know, I'm that girl. <laughs> and I actually watched it in Japanese class when I was younger. So I'm. it's not like I don't like anime or anything. Uh, I, I think we all went through a phase possibly when we were younger, but I was more into Pokemon and Digimon and uh, like little monster ones. Sailor Moon, I really liked Sailor Moon and Card Captors when that was a thing. But I'm, I didn't really follow any particular storyline or anything. So I think it would be really interesting to do that because even though it is animated, um, I don't necessarily work in that anime style. It's something that I haven't really touched since I was a teenager. And I'm also really tempted to do it for the um, Inktober prompts that I'm doing this year. I, I really want to try one of the Daisy prompts in an anime style. I might even do that today. Who knows? <laughs> I am pre-filming though. So the day that you're watching this, this, this is not an anime one. So don't go searching for that. Or if you're watching this in the future, you probably missed everything that's gone on and uh, don't worry about anything that I'm saying. <laughs> um, the last Winifred on the page, sorry, I missed it. I'm getting way too sidetracked. The last one, uh, that Winnie, the center fashion illustration there, that is one of my favorites from this entire thing. I just gave her, her, you know, her gown, her cloak. I took a bit of artistic liberty there and put her in a bit of a fashion pose. Um, that's what I was referring to earlier when I said I, I only cared to finish Winnie. I didn't really want to work on Sarah Jessica Parker or Kathy and Jimmy. Why am I calling them by their real names? <laughs> I say Winifred and then I go into Sarah Jessica Parker because her name in the movie is Sarah. So I think that's confusing me or not. I don't know. My favorite part in the movie I love when Sarah Jessica Parker sings. I pretty much love any line that, uh, that Winifred says. I love when, uh, uh, amok, amok, amok. I love when she screams, it's a road. I love oh, so many things. The um, the party, I remember the first time I saw the costume party that the mum and dad are at, and I, I didn't really catch the reference. Like, I didn't know that it was Madonna at that point that the mother was dressed as, but knowing it now, I'm just... I'm very impressed by the costume. <laughs> uh, and I just, I love, obviously I put a spell on you. How am I missing this? Do you know what? In 2016, uh, on a mini moon that Steve and I went on after we got married, I saw the Hocus Pocus villain spectacular show at Walt Disney World. And the woman who played Winifred Sanderson was a dead ringer for Bette Midler. Not just in like, you know, the facial thing, because she's got the teeth in, so, you know, she can kind of, you can get away with a lot with the wig, the teeth, and the makeup, um, but her mannerisms were dead on, and her voice was spot on as well, and it was, I mean, I could not get enough of that show. I think it's probably one of the best offerings for me, for the type of shows that I like to watch, very production, very glitz, very glam, very over the top and outrageous. <laughs> I think that was one of the most fun times I've ever had watching a Disney show and uh, and I loved it. So if you can uh, check that out on YouTube, it should be on their Hocus Pocus Villain Spectacular. They do a, um, a castle show over in Walt Disney World. I wish they had it in California. I'd be in that park every day just catching, you know, <laughs> the three o'clock viewing, but it was so, so good. The costumes are spot on, the wigs, like, I mean, Sarah's wig in the show isn't my fave, not going to lie. Uh, but if that's the one thing I'm pulling out of that, then you can tell I'm, I'm grasping at straws to try and pick something. It was such a good show. I had such a good time watching it. And, um, and yeah, you should check that out. If you really like Hocus Pocus, I think you'll be really into, uh, just seeing that show and seeing how those actresses interpret those characters. Cause they, you could tell they put a lot of effort into finding the right people to pull off that, uh, those characters. But yeah, I can't believe I almost forgot to tell you that. That's one of my favorite all time stories of life. <laughs> I feel like I actually got to see Winnie, Mary and Sarah in real life. It just completed me as a, as a Halloween addict, not really, but like a person that likes Halloween that didn't necessarily get a big childhood full of Halloween. I feel like every year I get to revisit that childhood um, nostalgia that I don't necessarily have. <laughs> all these repressed false memories. Um, so yeah, these are all the images that I came up with today. Like I said, I think I oversold a little bit, but there are some things that I really like in this and some definitely some things I would probably try again. Um, my favorite being the Winifred Sanderson fashion illustration that I did on the second to last page. And I also really loved the final image that I did. It wasn't necessarily any of the characters from the movie, but I used Winifred's hair and that feeling of Winifred. Um, I feel like if she was younger and a lot prettier, um, then, because that's their goal, right? They want to become younger and more beautiful. Uh, what if she really went there? And I think that final image I did was one that really stood out to me that I 
particularly liked. There it is. Alrighty, hope you like Sketchflix. I'll be back with another video very soon. Bye.